So we've done a lot of the overstrip and trim back thing, and I'm doing another one here on the keel line. It's a kind of it's a related process to what I did at the chine and at the water line, um, but here we're going straight down the keel line. Um, this is a little bit more, a little bit easier to envision as a straight line. All the other ones were straight lines also, but they were straight in sort of weird places. Um, this is straight down the middle. Um, and I'm going to do it a different way here. Here I have a 3 8 inch router bit and a 3 quarter inch bushing. My plan is to take the router and run this right down the center line and I'm going to use this bushing in order to um, ride along the fence and have the router follow that center line. So what I end up doing is I make a bunch of these wedges and they get glued to the part of the boat that I've already stripped up. Um, I put down a patch of uh, masking tape and hot melt glue it down to that. And then I will put a, um, a board on top of it, of it, sort of visualize something like this. And so what this little wedge does is make a level surface and each form has its own wedge and each wedge is its own shape. As we get down towards the middle, they start uh, getting more and more wedge shaped as they go. And that's to keep the top of this, the top surface of that uh, fence we're making level. So what this is, is I measured on my, you know, going to my plans, I made a set of patterns that was a, put a half inch from, actually no, it's a three eighths from the center line. Um, so that will put this collar, three quarter inch collar, so it's centered on the center line. So this edge here will be uh, three eighths from the center line. And then it's a half inch above the top of the keel line, so the highest point here. Um, so, and it's consistent with all of them, always a half inch and always three eighths off the center line. So the first thing I need to do is find the center line. So we're gonna go back to this tool. Um, just, I'm gonna find the center line mark on the forms, transfer that to the outside of the boat, and then I will take and measure three eighths. So I have three eighths here on my calipers. I'll find the center line and then measure three eighths from that center line. Um, and then this little wedge will be glued right on that mark, three eighths from the center line. So the first thing <coughs> we need to do Let's put down the tape and a big enough pad here to uh, fit under all these little wedgie doodles. I've already already pulled the staples out um, where these pads are going to get put down. So it's the same process here we've done all along using this gauge, which I just dropped. So it's the same process we've done all along using this gauge, line it up with the center line on the forms. And then transfer that line to the outside of the boat. I have a little bit different gauge right here. So this one, it's offset by a quarter inch um, because down here, I've got the uh, end form. 
So this I can just press up against that end form and the end form is a half an inch thick. So this offsets at a quarter inch towards the middle and so that marks the middle of the end form. Now I'm setting this to a 3 8 inch offset. Lock that in place. And I'll measure horizontally out 3 8 of an inch. So now I'll use hot melt glue to hold these in place. You see I need a little bit more tape on there. All right, so it'd be a hot melt glue on here. Put it up right up to that line. So now we have a bunch of little spacers all a half inch above the keel line, three eighths inch off from the keel line, all level across the top. And so we can put a fence down on top of that, screw it in place, and have a way to cut a nice straight line. So I've got uh, some one inch sheetrock screws. If I've got a half inch thick batten, these are minimum a half inch thick, so a half inch above, this shouldn't end up screwing down into the boat. We wanna avoid that. Get it. Set that head down a little bit. And I'm going to sort of split the length difference here. This batten has a little bit of a curve to it. So if it looks straight, it is straight. So I have the router bit set up in here. So again, 3 8 inch router, 3 quarter inch pushing. So this should end up placing the router right over the center line. And it's worth doing a sanity check on that. Um, just going down and lowering the router and see if it looks like it's lining up where it ought to. So this router spins this way. So that's this way. So if I were to start down at the end, the far end there, and run it 
up this fence, there's a possibility that it would just rip all those strips off. It's pulling the strips away from the center line, and so it's going to tend to rip those strips up. So what I'm going to do um, is start at the middle, work one way, then start at the middle and work the other way, just to have it so that it's not pulling the strips off from the ends. So that's got this side trimmed up. So I still need to uh, fill in this side. And so what's the advantage of this? The advantage is I'll, I'm going to leave this fence on and I'm going to strip up. And as long I don't need to fit these strips in tight against this side, I can leave a gap as, as long as it's less than 3 8 inch wide. So I can sort of rough fit those, put them in, and then come by, do another pass, and end up with a 3 8 inch wide slot right here at the center line. And then, how do I fill that slot in? I rip, rip a 3 8 inch wide strip um, that just drops right in there, and I don't need to worry about getting a precise fit on the ends of the strips. So I overstripped here, cut them back to um, one side of the center line. I'll then fill these in and rough fit them in there to the other side of the center line, then come back, make a, another pass with the router, have a 3 8 inch slot, and drop a strip right in there. So um, I'll probably not show you all the details of fitting, filling these in. I might. Um, and then I'll show you the, the finished pass. So we're going to fit this strip into this section here. And so we'll just see how far the full width strip goes. It goes about there. And then the length of the strip is about there. So we're talking a tape or something like that. Um, doesn't need to be perfect. We've got uh, 3 eighths of an inch here of slop to work with. Um, so if this isn't perfectly tight, it's okay. But we want it. So it gets all the way to the end. So I've just marked that taper. So something like that. So that fits in there like that. And that's close enough. It's, it's not super tight right up in here, but it doesn't need to be. Now we will just hold that in place. Little bit. Come down to the other end of the boat. Turn off the excess. And the taper comes back this far. So it's something like that. some glue. 
Remember, we don't want to overdo the glue. Just want to have enough to hold the strips together with a little bit of squeeze out. Hard to get in the end there, so I'll put some just right on the strip. that in place. Sure this end is tucked down tight. And it's done. So you see we're not making this super tight here. Um, there's a 3 16 inch gap there. Um, but that's okay because when we run the router past again it'll trip this trim this back on either side and we'll have a nice uniform gap space there and we'll drop a strip right in. 